Hey everybody, welcome to Local Business Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Case, and I'm on a mission to help you. Every week we're gonna be talking to local business owners and experts to get their best tips, tricks, and hacks to grow your business. This show's designed to teach you, inspire you, and motivate you to take massive action and start to build your future-proof business. Whether you're just starting off or you're taking your existing business to the next level, this episode is for you. So let's get started. Hey listeners, I'm your host, Carl Case, Head of Business Development for Referizer, joined today by Corey Lyons, VP of Franchise Development for Perspire Sauna Studios. Welcome to the podcast, Corey. Hey, thanks for having me, Carl. Pretty excited to be here. Awesome, man. Well, obviously, you don't become the VP of Fran Development overnight. So talk to us about your journey and how you got here. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I was in franchising before I even knew I was in franchising when I was in restaurant operations for Applebee's International, working for the corporation there and specializing in opening new restaurants. And like I said, I thought I was in the restaurant industry until never forget in Addison, Illinois, small town, small suburb outside of Chicago, a franchisee told me, well, no, you, you know, I'm your customer. I'm the franchisee. The whole time I thought I was in the restaurant industry, right? And then I transferred that to fitness. And it began in fitness operations as well for, at the time, it was a, an emerging brand called Snap Fitness, which turned into one of the world's largest fitness franchises out there. And ultimately grew my career with them to be the director of operations. And I oversaw operations of the largest division, 127 total clubs of the corporate-owned facilities. And then had a team of over 400 people, which was great. I just naturally progressed into business development with Snap Fitness and then the new parent company, Lyft Brands. And I headed the franchise development for them, uh, North America, for about seven of my 13 years with the organization. As careers progressed, I found Perspire Sauna Studio, a a brand that really made me excited. And I joined the team as the vice president of franchise development. And here I am today. Congrats, Corey, on that journey. Talk to me and our listeners. Where is Perspire today? Where are you guys growing? How can listeners get involved? Yeah, awesome. Thank you. So we're just scratching the surface of our growth for our organization as well as for our franchisees. We currently have 29 locations open in 17 different states. So we kind of have that shotgun approach. We're focused in Orange County, California. That's where we're headquartered as well uh, and, and growing in from the coast. We offer the world's best infrared sauna experience for our guests and for our members. It's all we do. We do it better than anybody else in the world. And that's a huge reason why we have so many members per studio, as well as our franchisees continue to reinvest and open more and more studios. That's amazing. And what website can people go to to find where the nearest location is? PerspireSaunaStudio.com. Sweet. Mm -hmm. All right, Corey. So transitioning, obviously being in this space for over 10 years now, you have experience some things to say the least I can imagine. Um, So seeing as the podcast is local business hacks, I'm going to give you the floor to talk to us about some stories that ultimately taught you lessons that, you know, you wish that little Corey way back when knew that, you know, now. Yeah, perfect. Well, we could have a whole series of this, but you know, one, one thing that I'm a firm believer in is respecting and honoring the past and learning from it. That's something that's really big is not just when people always talk about learning from their mistakes. And that's something that's really big, but you also have to learn from your successes. Know what you did, stick with that and going through going through the process. That's something so often people always think about failure. That's where you learn the most, right? Failure, but you fail forward and, and continuing to learn. So that's something that's really, really big. And then honoring that past too. Organizations, as they grow, every organization was that smaller startup at one point or another. Every single one of them was. And with these big goals to grow and grow, but the passion so big and the passion is what started these organizations and what started the companies. You have to follow that passion and you have to be able to wake up in year 10 with that same passion as you had in year one as well. And if you don't have that passion, then it's time to take a look and say, you know, what's next for me as well. So you're learning from the past and honoring it is something that's been huge for me. No questions about it. When you talk about learning from your failures, I call that paying the idiot tax. Yeah. I I have paid the idiot tax. The government should be paying me back for my idiot taxes, but that's so funny. So Corey, 
Think about a story or let's pick a topic. So let's talk about franchise development and what you deal with on a daily basis. What are things that you've learned throughout your career that set you up for success in your day-to-day that you know have gotten you to where you are? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, the age-old comparison in franchise development is selling versus awarding. And I can tell you that I was the best salesperson out there. No questions about it. I was great at sales. And and, hey, I'm not going to break my arm, pat myself on the back, but I still am. But there's a huge difference between selling and awarding. Selling, hey, you're selling the the franchise, you've done your job. But awarding the franchise to that right candidate, who's that brand fit, not just because they have the money and they can fog a mirror, doesn't make them a brand fit. They go along with the core values of your brand that you're representing. They love your brand. They've experienced your brand from a consumer standpoint. So they have that passion component as well. Being able to find that right fit because in franchising, you're the closest thing to being business partners without actually being business partners. And so you're in it together and you have to be able to award the franchises to those entrepreneurs that see that vision. I always talk about it takes a unique entrepreneur to be a highly successful franchisee simply for the fact that you want to reap the benefits of owning your own business, but you also want to be told how to run it. It takes that it's a very unique individual. So selling franchise, you're going to move the needle and such, but awarding franchises, you're going to be growing your brand with the right franchisees who are going to validate to the right franchisees. And you're going to grow exponentially by awarding versus selling. It's something that's huge for us. I love that. So what are some things that you can look at, because I I would imagine the brands that I work with from their brand development side, they have a piece of of info on their website where you can fill it out, do a check to make sure that you have enough money. But I would imagine that's similar to a resume. That nowadays, the resume is the biggest, who knows what's real on there. And and you can't really check it anymore. You can just ask, you know, did somebody work from this, this time to this time? And in this position and you can't legally ask how did they do? Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, what are some ways that you find those answers out to the questions that you're, that you're looking for? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, Carl, you got to ask them, right? So I'm always asking the personal questions of, of the why and the when and components like that, but as well as what brings you to our brand, what makes you feel that you would be a good franchisee for the brand? And I'm asking these questions immediately, right? Just to be able to hear their responses. And hey, at that first phone call, a positive or negative response, it's not the end game by any means. It's about building rapport with them as well and learning their pain points. Are they tired of the corporate rat race? And that's why they're looking to be you know, a, a franchisee of a concept or has our concept changed their life for the better and components like that. So being able to find out that why it's so critical. Another aspect that we do with every single candidate after we get their quote unquote online resume and we have that first phone call is we're sending them a personality profile. We want to make sure that we're communicating with them the ways that they want to be communicated. Are they the analyzer or the highly emotional uh, buyer components like that? So we're able to change our approach to meet that candidate's needs as well, which has been very, very advantageous. But we also want to know if just the personality is going to be the right fit for our brand as well. So there's a lot of those questions in there too. And then we review it together and we talk about this is what we look for and this is why we look for it. And we develop that brand story as well. So it's something that asking those questions, you know, getting, you know, the way I look at it is when somebody inquires and says that, hey, here's my name, here's my number and my email address. And yes, I checked the boxes of the qualifications. All that is a just a right to say, call me. That's really what it is, right? Just call me and give me some information. Now, you know, in the past, and for some candidates, we provide information quicker for some and slower for others and such. That's part of the personality profile. If they can't absorb a a ton of information at once, we're going to slow play that. And we know that development process is going to be a little bit longer as well. So really catering our process to those prospects needs has been very successful for us too. That's awesome. And I can imagine with time and experience, you start to really feel the energies and and if this is going to work or not. And that leads me to my last question for you, which is, you mind sharing some red flags that you've seen over the years that, because I can imagine there's some epic ones in there. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, another old saying is trust your gut, right? <laughs> Normally your gut is right. I could have a conversation with somebody and I can generally tell after about 30 minutes, 60 minutes speaking with them, if they'd be the right fit without going through any numbers or anything like that. Some red flags that I've always found is that person who's strictly only about the numbers, right? Has no passion for the brand. It just wants to know how much money am I going to make? And, you know, yeah, exactly. Go buy you know, a McDonald's. And, and, yeah, right. Exactly. And aspects like that. So that's the biggest red flag. Another red flag that I've often seen is the uh, take versus give. And throughout the process, I'm going to provide information once I get information. And I'm going to ask for additional information prior to getting that next step and having that back and forth. If they only want to take and not give, there's some sort of red flag out there. I don't know if it's an exact red flag. It could be an orange flag or a yellow flag, but there's a reason for that. So we have to be able to dive into that and say, what are your hesitancies? Why are you hesitating providing this information to us? Because ultimately there is a reason behind that. If you know a yellow flag, not a necessarily red flag is... You know, if, if uh, somebody's looking to invest and they don't have a social media profile, either on LinkedIn or Facebook, you know, what Instagram, and because 95% of the world has it or United States has one, especially investors, generally that's the first place I look is, is LinkedIn. Now, why would that be a flag? Is it somebody that you Google them and there's no... That there's no results. Are you being shopped? The way I look at it right away, hey, you're, are we being shopped by a competitor? Or are we being secret shop? What have you? So that's something that with every single candidate, we're always looking up, who is this person? Are we looking up a, a John Doe or are we looking up a Carl Case? Being able to see, I, you, I Google you, I'm going to be able to see that you're the host of the podcast amongst others. But just being able to uh, find who the candidates are and learning a little bit about that those candidates is really big. So if they don't have anything out there, that's a, that's a, a flag of some sort, no, no question about it. And then the biggest red flag though, in my career, what from the top to the bottom, no ifs, ands, or buts about it is the open timeline. Not being able to meet deadlines, meet dates, canceling meetings. Generally speaking, if somebody cancels a meeting and they don't immediately say, hey, I've canceled this meeting and here's why, there's a reason for that. They're either you either need to buy them a pair of socks to keep their feet warm, or they're looking at something different too. So that's the biggest. If they're if somebody's not timely and somebody just cancels meeting, no calls, no shows, that is by far the biggest red flag. No questions about it. That's awesome. And I can imagine that promoting internally is one of the greatest tools that you guys have. And for our listeners that have never experienced a personality test, hop online, answer like a handful of questions and be mind blown at these algorithms that can literally, based on your adjectives on how you describe yourself, can show you some of the most incredible things about your communication styles, about how you learn, how you listen. I mean, I remember the first time I took one, I was, I was scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're pretty accurate. Yeah. And there's a ton of them out there too. And there's no, in, in my opinion, I mean, there's, we use one, but there's a ton of them out there that are all great. I mean, some of the books behind me are about the personality tests and the strength finders and components like that. So no questions about it. They're very valuable. That's awesome, man. Well, Corey, from myself and our listeners, I so appreciate you hopping on, talking about your story. And for those of you that are looking for franchising and looking to learn, Corey, you mind if they reach out to you? Please do reach out to Corey at perspiresaunastudio.com and I'll show you why Perspire Sauna Studio is the hottest franchise in wellness. Sweet, man. Well, thank you again and wishing you the best. Awesome. Thank you very much, Carl. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to head over to our site, local-business-hacks.com to check out the show notes and send me questions or ideas for future episodes. If you want to grow your business, just like the people you've heard from here, Follow Local Business Hacks Podcast and tune in for new tips, tricks, and tactics. Until next time, thanks for listening and keep hacking.